Hello to everyone out there. This is Tony. It's been a little bit. We had the fundraiser go off uh, several weeks ago through Indiegogo. I want to give you an update on that, what they did to us near the end of the fundraiser, and the countless people we owe uh, out there who are supporters that have saved the day. And hopefully, by God's grace, that will continue. But anyway, I want to go over that, give you the Indiegogo update. At the end of this tape, there will be a message um, from another gentleman. I want you to see it. It's just very brief, about seven minutes. And it's, it's quite interesting on the book of Revelation and New Jerusalem. Uh, in the next message, we will go back. I like to give a little Bible message. And this one will be on uh, something the Lord said right before he was crucified and how it's often misunderstood. And it's really an amazing statement by the Lord yet again. What is it, right? And um, also, I'd like to ask for prayers uh, uh, for my niece, Tiffany. She's in Arkansas, and as some of you have been our supporters for a couple of years and friends with uh, JIL Gaming and Noah VR, she battles cancer. And she was recently put back into the hospital. Um, she has an aggressive form of throat cancer that may be going to her brain. Please pray for her. She and her husband have three children. The youngest is three years old. So we're praying this baby girl, her name's Peyton, gets to know her mommy. So please pray for my sweet niece, Tiffany. Uh, she's in Arkansas. She's 30. So um, God keep you all, and thank you for those kind prayers. Uh, they mean the world to us. And I just spoke with a supporter out of Missouri named Jimmy, and what a godly man. What an incredible man of faith, and his uncle as well. And uh, I'll be talking with him again. His uncle's very knowledgeable in the word as well. So thank you, Jimmy. It was a great talk and time of prayer. Um, I would also like to then go into real quickly what Indiegogo happened. So when we went up on the Indiegogo fundraiser, part of the reason we're doing it is you have to, you know, show your business and that you are a real business. We had to show them our business license, our tax ID number, our EIN number, and so on. Many, many things. They put us to the ringers for about four weeks, but that was okay because we wanted everyone to know these guys are legit. They're legitimately doing what they're saying they're doing. So they put us through the ringer, and it, it took just shy of a month before we got approval um, in late May for the fundraiser. So anyway, um, well, actually, I guess we started in early May. So anyway, uh, but it took us three weeks before that, three and a half weeks before that. Lo and behold, again, uh, we put our perks in there at the same time. They saw our perks for almost four weeks. They okayed our perks for four Said it's a go, you know, it took them about a month, but they checked everything out. Our business license was legit, our EIN number, our tax ID, all of that. So they give us the okay. We're excited. I get to go on a couple of programs. Tony Woodcock, God bless him, and God Rules Channel, and Sell Daddy One, uh, and Sons of Thunder. He did an incredible job out there as well. So we run the fundraiser for about six weeks. And five weeks in, we had about $34,400 raised on the $400 perk. As many of you know, this is going out to people who did that. And um, so anyway, but overall, we'd raised 37500 They notify me five weeks into the fundraiser, into the six-week fundraiser, you've got to take that down. And that's why it abruptly went down. Many of you are asking, what, what happened to the $400 perk? Well, we had to take it down. And then they didn't stop there. When the fundraiser was over, they said, you've got to refund it now. And I never, we never saw the money. So I'm like, how do I refund it? And they said, you got to go in on your control panel for your fundraiser. And, you, and I had to do each one individually, each of you individually. And um, I don't know. Somebody said they put a message in there. I have no idea. All I know is that five weeks into the six-week fundraiser, we had to refund $34,400. Now, we never saw that. I, I asked our contact there. His name's Brian. I said, Brian, first of all, why didn't you tell us this when we were submitting that this wasn't? We can't get these interviews back. We can't get all of this back. And he's, he didn't have an answer. So uh, all I know is with one week left, we had to pull it down and then refund to even get the 3500 we had raised additionally we had to refund the 344 so you many of you on this are on the list that we did get the contact information so thank the lord for that 
So I'm going to send this out. I would have gotten it much sooner to you, but I've been under the weather. I've been fighting a little bit of a respiratory cold. So, um, but I'm a little bit back to normal. So <laughs> if there is a normal Tony. Uh, and so I just want you guys to know that and know what happened. We have uh, anybody who requests it, I can send you our EIN number, you know, tax ID number, stuff like that. But we couldn't even get on their page without showing them our business license, all of it. So anyway, that being said, we're praying that those of you who did get refunded, I had to be the one to go in on our fundraiser page on Indiegogo and check each one of you who donated $400 and we thank you so much. Um, please don't miss out. I have a video that I'll put below this one that explains how that little $400 could turn into $25,000 or more through NOAA VR in the coming months and, year and years. Uh, we'll be gaining money up on Steam it will go out on iHeartRadio uh, to over 100 million conservative Christians a day. I am friends with, uh, through my nephew, I'm friends with the vice president at iHeartRadio. They got us an incredible package put together. So it's going to go worldwide through Steam. It's going to go nationally to over 100 million Christians a day for six weeks. And then we just re-up it. But here in the United States to over 100 million conservative Christians. So please, um, if you would, now's the time to get on board sorry that that happened i wish to the good lord obviously that it didn't but the lord has his purpose in everything we believe as the scripture says romans 8 28 all things work to together together to the good of them who love the lord and are called according to his purpose so we just trust the lord for that many of you rallied after that and said hey we want this we'll we'll get another one and it was so kind of you guys who did that but for those of you who have not, please, if you want that $400 perk, and we're going to be fighting to turn that $400 perk for you uh, into $25,000 or more. And please look at the video that I'll put just below this in the email uh, section on how that will happen by God's grace through this game going out and being downloaded hundreds of thousands and even millions of times. And that that would get you a portion of that 15% profits over the next year, two years, 10 years, it will be coming in. And it will also include all the sequels. We plan on having four sequels to this game. So overall, five different games that you will gain a percentage of for that $400 donation because we're firm, we're in firm belief that the only time we'll need any help once this gets out there is right now. And we believe it's gonna have collect millions of dollars. We'll have millions of dollars coming into Jesus's Lord games, JL games, but also into the game making pipeline. We'll be able to hire more Christian programmers and be able to get the sequels out there at an even more spectacular rate and amazing tight uh, game playing ability. So just if you would, anybody jump on that. This is coming out to you, but again, it wasn't us. Indiegogo tells us five weeks into a six week fundraiser, you got to take that down. And it had, I said, guys, I can't get that time back. I can't get these shows back. We had raised by God's grace and your kindness, $34,400 on that. You should have seen me going through. I had to do each one individually. It wasn't like you could click it and then go refund. They didn't set it up that way. Uh, you had to go individually to everyone, but it did give us your contact information. So trying to get this out i would have had it out sooner but i was uh, dealing with a respiratory chest cold so doing better and i uh, wanted to get this video out thank you so very much please don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions tony at noahvr.net tony at noahvr.net or text me uh, you know text is my favorite form 702 i used to live in vegas we moved up here to vancouver washington because it's cooler be 118 down in vegas this week i don't miss that <laughs> okay so uh anyway 702-846-9925 is my personal phone number you can text me i love to talk and pray with anybody any questions you have we're in vancouver washington we just made some friends in fact in washington and in oregon supporters and their dear ones just like jimmy out of missouri and we picked up supporters believe this or not guys uh, since this happened, all that with Indiegogo, we picked up supporters in Ireland and Bulgaria. Thank you to those dear ones in Ireland and in Bulgaria. Oh my goodness, we couldn't believe it. So it's been, now we're up to like 38 individuals from 38 different nations have said, we want to support you and we can't wait for Noah VR. This thing's going to go worldwide. 
or global. It's, it's just going to be amazing. So anyway, just please be with us. It's going to go worldwide. I said that because it's preconditioned for this for so many years. But anyway, uh, please uh, just get back in there if you'd like. If you donated, you don't know how much it meant. We're in talks with programmers. We're in talks with voice actors. And we're trying to get the CGI. Oh, man, I want to have this out there by late September. Uh, excuse me late August or early September, mid-September. I can't wait for you guys to see the CGI video because it will tell the story of how Noah goes to his sons. His sons then go to Father Methuselah, and just before he dies, he gives them each a scroll with a mission to find the tomb of Adam. Now, believe it or not, Jewish culture, Jewish apocrypha, and Christian culture all have stories that Adam's bones were taken on board the ark and to be reburied in world after the flood post flood so it's not like we're just making this up there's actual a tomb outside of jerusalem dedicated to adam because that was where they had an idea his bones were buried reburied after the flood so you can look it up online is there a tomb to adam outside jerusalem and all this stuff oh my gosh so the evidences are there and uh the evidences are i saw it on core the other day people said well did Methuselah die in the flood? No, he didn't. Read the read the Jewish histories. Read uh, the apocryphal works. They tell you he died seven days before the flood. His name means his death will bring. His death will bring. So it's and 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 as they many have done this, many pastors have done this. If you take the names of Adam all the way to Noah, it tells the gospel message. Please look that up online. Gospel message and the names of Adam all the way to Noah. But Methuselah's name means his death shall bring. And Noah's name means rest. So it's getting to the Messiah in the naming of the people. That his death shall bring the despairing, which is Lamech, I believe it was, Noah's father. His death shall bring Methuselah, Lamech, the despairing, rest. Noah means rest. So Jesus was, he is the Messiah who brings the despairing rest. But look it up, what each name means from Adam all the way to Noah. And you see the gospel message there. But Methuselah's name means his death shall bring. So it had a lot of double entendre there. The Lord waited till Methuselah died. The clock went off. He has seven days. And that's when these guys' mission begins. The three sons of Noah in the game. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They have seven days to find the tomb of Adam and bring Adam's bones back to the ark before the flood starts. Oh, it's going to be really cool. So anyway, anybody who's who's in on it, 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 I mean, it's just, oh my God, it can bless us so many ways. And Jimmy, I was just talking to, he's most impressed with the possibility that this is going to bring people to Christ. And we are too. We're talking to brothers in China, our dear brother in China, who I know I'll mess up his name. My brother has told me, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about saying it. But I love you so much. He's so discerning, our brethren in China. You wouldn't believe how much discernment this guy has. And he's been through health issues, and we love you, brother. Our brethren in China, we love you. But we picked up some new ones in Bulgaria and Ireland, and this is got we've had write-ins from Indonesia. It's incredible. So Noah VR can touch so many people. Uh, our dear brother in Puerto Rico, and uh, Richard, obviously, in England, and so on and so on. Uh, Anthony in Australia, it's just amazing how many people this silly little game can touch and change the, we believe it's going to change the gaming industry, bring about the birth of the Christian video game industry, conservative Christians. So anyway, it's because of you guys that we've even gotten this far. God Almighty, through his son, and because of you guys being his hand to us, that we made it this far. We're trying with everything in us to have this out by this coming Christmas season, the day after Thanksgiving, you know, Black Friday. We're trying, we're fighting, we're digging to have this out. Um, there'll be four roughly stages or areas that people can play the game, as well as a CGI promo that will tell the whole story. So we believe it's going to go viral. And it's just the first stage in several stages of this game. So thank you. Anyone who's been a part of it, I'll put again the video down there, how you can make $25,000, $100,000 off your one share one by one little investment. 400 bucks it can pay back in spades once this is out to the world so uh thank you and we just i'm humbled i just want to straighten everything up 
we didn't do anything. We did everything they asked us. We we got approved on every perk, and uh, we showed them our business ID, our you know tax ID, our history, all of it. And they said, "Okay, go with it." And and that one perk raised thirty four thousand four hundred dollars, and that's where they came after. So anyway, God bless you and keep you. We will just, um, I'll have a new update out soon. Please watch the end of this. There's something really cool at the end of it. And it's from a different Christian with a message about New Jerusalem. It's only about seven minutes. So if you want to listen to it, God keep you all. And uh, we love you guys. Thank you for getting us this far. We're getting closer. We're hoping to be able to, we're upgrading equipment as we speak. And we're ta in talks with some other programmers, TGI artists, and um, voice actors. So God keep you all, and thank you so very much. God bless you, and Jesus bless you. New Jerusalem, it said, is built made up of 12 precious stones that we would make into jewelry now. Now, here's the fascinating thing, which to me is the final proof that that book is the Word of God, that it must be God-inspired. In the last generation only, we've discovered how to make purer light than we had before. Most light is bouncing around, waves crashing into each other, going in all directions, so that the light coming from that spotlight still lights this side of my face by reflecting off that, that tinsel up there. Um, we're used to light coming at us from all directions. But we've now discovered how to send light in one direction. Laser light is the most common. You've seen laser light beams straight as a die. But we've also got what we call cross-polarized light. A polarized filter, if you can imagine, allows light through like that. But if you put another polarized filter at right angles to that, you've really got a very fine filter. If you take sunglasses and take one lens and put it at right angles to the other, it goes even darker. It only lets very straight light through. Now, people have taken jewels and precious stones and cut a very thin slice for microscopic purposes and then shone cross-polarized light through them to see what happens, to put it very crudely, what happens to these precious stones in pure light. And one of two entirely different things happens with every jewel. The technical term, to give you a bit of science for a moment, is anisotropic jewels and isotropic jewels. Now what happens is this, some jewels in pure light, whatever their color to begin with, they may be red, blue or green, turn into all the colors of the rainbow and the most fantastic patterns. Other precious stones in pure light lose all their color, just go black, look like a lump of coal dust. And it's only in the last, this generation, that people have discovered this unusual property. For example, diamonds in pure light are nothing. Did you get that, ladies? They're Did not you even. Hear a... that? Diamonds, nothing. nothing. They won't be there. <laughs> no, so make the most of them here. <coughs> Rubies, uh, garnets, just lose everything. Emeralds. No, they keep it. Oh, good. There are other stones that are anisotropic and go into these beautiful colors. Now, here's the fascinating thing. The 12 precious stones that God uses to build the new Jerusalem are all anisotropic. In pure light, they are all far more beautiful. And God doesn't touch the diamonds or the rubies. He doesn't build with them. Now, let's just put on the screen a picture of these stones. Yeah. Look at the top 12 stones on this picture and you'll see the stones of the New Jerusalem. Look at the four bottom ones at the bottom of the picture and you'll see they're black, no attraction, whatever. Now then, who knew this 2,000 years ago? No scientist knew it, nobody knew it. John the Apostle writing the, down the book of Revelation as the Lord dictated it to him, he didn't know. Nobody knew except one person in the entire universe, and he knew, and that was God himself. Where is that written exactly? 
Revelation 21, right. halfway through, and you'll find all the 12 stones listed there. And you can just imagine from the picture we've seen on the screen how beautiful the New Jerusalem is going to be. Mm. No need for do-it-yourself decoration or changing rooms there. No need. The materials that God uses will be fabulous. From verse 19, 21 right. verse 19. Read them out. Uh, the first foundation was jasper. Yeah. The, uh, the, the second, sapphire. The third, chalcedony. The fourth, emerald. The fifth, sardon sardonyx. The sixth, uh, carnelian. The seventh, chrysolite. The eighth, beryl. The ninth, topaz. The tenth, chrysoprase. Or chrysoprase. chrysoprase. The eleventh, jacinth. And the twelfth, uh, the twelfth, amethyst. No diamonds, no rubies, no garnets, because they're, an, they're isotropic. Mm. Now, isn't that amazing? To me, that one thing alone would prove that the Bible was inspired by God, because nobody could have known this. They didn't know it until our generation. But there it is.